build, how did you build your personal brand, right? Whether it was in a corporate setting or as you were out there as an entrepreneur, how, how, what did that look like? Well, I think that that person who, I, I will also say that that persona maybe doesn't exist as much anymore, so we'll talk about that. But that person I really created through acting. I did. I think that I looked at other people uh, that I thought were good at different things. And, you know, I think that I write a lot about that in my book, Act As If. Sometimes, you know, my son says to me, Mom, I don't know how you turned out with the parents you have who are so, like, humble, and the, you turned out the way you turned out. I observed other people, right? And maybe a lot of, I got a lot of things from men that I worked with and a lot of things from women I worked with. But I don't know that I liked that person that much, but that person was very successful, right? So it worked. I think when I took the time to go back to school and get more into my emotional self and study psychology and maybe heal a lot of my childhood issues, you know, I recommend to everybody to get help, to if you need therapy, to get therapy, if you need a life coach, to get a life coach. You know, my son said to me once, Mom, Kobe Bryant has seven coaches. And I go, well, if Kobe Bryant can have seven coaches, so can I. And I do. I hire coaches today for different things. And I'm constantly growing. And I realized that maybe, you know, I had already made money and maybe I didn't want to go back to having to be that person ever again. That person got me to where I was, but maybe that's not the person I wanted to be. And when I wrote this dissertation, which really started out for me in school, I was in psychology school in a very medical model school, Pacifica in, in, in uh, in Carpinteria, uh, California. And, you know, they kept talking about the dysfunctionality of minority women in America. And I was on these corporate boards where they were saying minority women are the solution to the economy. They're the number one spenders of the world, and they're going to own the economy of the United States for the next 100 years. And I thought, what is wrong? Like, how could this be so disparate? How could these people think that these women are the problem, and these people think they're the solution? And I went deep into the psychology of minority women around money and success. And I kept thinking, I guess my hypothesis in school was, if I could change the psychology of women that are minorities around being self-reliant economically, could I change the world? Because if these women already are economically favored by numbers, just by birth rates, by whatever, and by... By, by shopping rates, if they also knew that they had this power, would it change them? That was my hypothesis. And I wrote this book, and I was so blessed because I was on all these corporate boards, and Ileana knows, all of my the boards I was on, Coca-Cola came out and said, we will fund you to take this and turn it into something. And I said, I don't want your money because then it's propaganda. And they go, we will give you the money with no strings attached. And I started traveling the country, basically creating TED Talks for minority women with the women that were not celebrities, but the women that were the real stars of our communities, the doctors, the lawyers, the entrepreneurs that these women admired. Ileana and I have been, that's how we met, right, Ileana? And I started collecting the data. You know, we're in the, the world of big data. And what came out is that these women more than anything, wanted to learn how to be financially self-reliant after the 2008 crash. They all have flown, flocked to entrepreneurship because minority women don't do well in corporate America. And they were um, wanting to be fully, authentically Latina, Black, Asian, you know, Middle Eastern, but they also wanted to be mainstream. And the reason that they related to me so much, believe it or not, is because I was on Celebrity Apprentice. Because they thought, you are so Latina, president of a Latino network, and yet you can tussle with Donald Trump. How the hell did you figure that out? 